All right, welcome folks to Jimmy Has Problems. Today is a problem I don't currently have, but I used to, which was designing circuit boards. So as an electrical engineering major in college, I tried to start a fire detector company and I was tasked with designing circuit boards in each case. And I was very bad at it. And of course, that's why I do software now. But this is a really cool, there's there's a couple of really cool things happening in this space when it comes to circuit design. So I want to talk about it. So the, the first step we're talking about is quilter.ai. And so what I've learned here is you kind of design a circuit board schematic. So you, you mock something up at a really high level. And the nature of circuit boards today is you can't actually lay it out for real your, yourself when you're designing it. You kind of have to make the design and then you have to nail down the layout. So it's a two-step process. I've actually been using this uh, sales deck from one of these companies to, to learn about it because it's been a while. So what, what they're doing, uh, let me throw this over, is you've got an analog designer who does the high-level design and then you have a layout engineer which gets into the nitty-gritty. And so a lot of these tools are stepping in here to take the high level design and turn it into a really detailed layout, right? So generally the, this back and forth can be a lot. And we're seeing this back and forth break down in lots of companies. I would say, you know, like in some places we have designers over here in terms of software, and then we have engineers over here and more and more of these no code tools and People like our so designers actually work with the developers. So just kind of interesting to see the analog. But so that's that's what's happening at a high level is you create a really high level design you want, and then Quilter does the specific layout, and then you can pick the design you want. And what I think is really interesting here is at first I was kind of bummed at this. I was like, ah, oh, we're losing this skill this, you know, human intuition about how layouts work. And I think there is a risk of that, right? There's a risk of people using this tool to just crank out layouts and be done with it. But for really advanced users, I think this is super powerful because as I say, you can explore millions of possibilities in terms of layouts and you can also select from dozens of them, right? And you can use testing to make more informed decisions about cost or performance. So I think this is really, really interesting. So one, I guess one point here is there is a high downside to this. So they, these need to be super accurate because if you design this wrong and the simulations they run don't actually accurately capture how it works, there's a lot of problems. So I think this is great for kind of plug and play, right? If you're doing something that's been done before, this can be a wonderful way of testing something out. It's also a great kind of form of prototyping where if you want to see if you can boost the power or increase the efficiency with a new layout, you can test it here rather than having to build something real. So let's see what it looks like. So uh, we can try an instant example. This is a fan controller, open source, very exciting. No idea what this means. That is like transistors and the like. Density, don't know what that means either, but let's see what happens. Here we go. Okay, wow. So. I, one, I'm really impressed with the UI here. I think this is really smart and really well done. I kind of wish that ChatGPT was a little bit more like this when it came to code or, or Copilot, where it would give you options. I really love that it's opinionated as well. All right, so it's recommending certain things, and it's telling me about them. This is, I think, just really well done. I'm impressed at the ability to translate, basically, these designs into human understandable things like, you know, fewer layers and shortest traces. And you, you can understand and use that. So there's these filters that you can filter on. I have no idea what any of them mean. You can filter by the layers, which I assume correlates with costs. I have no idea what fabricators is, but this is just freaking impressive. If, oh my God, it's 3D rendered. This is, uh, absolute insanity. So then I could download the board and I could share it with someone and get feedback. One thing I would love here is if this were kind of like Git and version controlled, if I could mess with this and make changes 
I don't know how difficult that is, but really interesting. And then you can request fab, which is pretty freaking wild. Wow. Okay. That's, that's amazing. I'm really, really impressed with this product. This is one of the more impressive products I've seen. Once again, it's solving the problem of, I think mostly when you're dealing with boilerplate boards for, let's say an underwater drone, which one of my friends made or a fire detector, you can crank out a board faster than ever before. And I'm, I'm just super impressed with this software. Very well done quilter. I'm going to look at now some other alternatives here that are out there. So Deep PCB is a smart, fast, easy way to design PCBs. Uh, this is kind of crazy. So I'm not sure what they're doing here. It looks very similar. And let's see what they're doing here. I kind of want to check out their blog. I love when someone has a blog. Oh, I don't have an account. Well, we're not going to make an account for that one. I can only make so many accounts. But... So there's a bunch of companies basically messing around with this. No idea what any of these words mean, by the way. That's really fun. Love the jargon here. So it looks like this one is very similar, I guess, Circuit Mind. I know that the big players have one of these, too. I know AutoCAD has one and a couple others. So I think, though, in general, so these three platforms are really for taking a design and turning it into a layout in an automated way, allowing you to speed up the process by getting feedback from AI, right? And I think this is really smart. There's a bunch of schematics out there. There's, there's defined rules about what works and what doesn't, similar to programming. And I think this is where LLMs kind of and AI work well, since they're not deterministic, they're probabilistic, and they work well when you can have constraints, right? Writing, I think, is a little bit tougher because it's hard to say what's good, but you can, in some real, you know, fixed ways, say what a good circuit board is and optimize for it. So this one, I think, is really interesting because, right, one of the kind of paradigms in software development is what's called infrastructure as code. And I think this is kind of like circuit board as code. And this really excites me because I start to think that maybe I could do circuit design. Like if I were able to write code that design circuits, like maybe I have a shot at it. And maybe, you know, I could, with ChatGPT, start to design a board. That is really, really exciting for me. It's also exciting because you get version control and you can start to change things and see how that works. You can maybe run tests on these and have a test suite so you can have confidence in what you're shipping. Like this starts to get to really automated stuff and you can start to apply some software practices to something that's more hardware related where maybe you have, you know, a continuous integration, continuous deployment set up here where you design a new circuit board, you release it, and that gets automatically sent out to a fab and built, right? That's crazy to me, really exciting. So I, this, this little tweak here that it's using code is a big deal for me okay and then finally uh Astris, no idea what they're doing they seem pre-revenue but they have these really great slide decks which i'll attach here that this is i mean their sales deck but it's really great for understanding for me the space and how this works and then finally they have like kind of a demo i think is worth walking through to show how this works so uh, eda software is basically just like a uh, circuit board design so you could take your high level design from there or an open source version, you know, for someone like me, who's goofy and doesn't understand this. So let's say I'm trying to do an RC car. I'm sure I could find an RC car circuit board, drop it in here, and then it would read that in. And then it would, well, this is where I don't think I could do this. I would have no idea what RC weights are and how to make them work. Uh, and then I think, hold on, let me see. See, I'm not going to do any of this because I don't know anything. And then apparently it will spit out my stuff. Okay, well, that was disappointing. Anyhow, really cool that they did this in Figma, though. It, it's kind of interesting that their sales deck and everything is in Figma. It makes me want to use that. Google Sheets? No, Google Slides. That, that's what I usually use. Okay, so... 
kind of one level above this in terms of abstraction is just using like right let's say you use these others to create a layout right a really specific layout how do you then turn it into you know a board that you can mess with and use well quilter has a little bit of integration you could also use like quilter or deep pcb and then turn to flash pcb to get it actually made right so you can and this will do a little bit of you know checking things out uh, and then it'll build to build materials that you can then order which is crazy i mean this is wild i remember when i was working at a small startup that was doing biotech the we had one person actually building the boards you know and the idea and i remember him using these schematic tools to build things out but then he would hand solder everything you know in the office basically and it would be wild to think that he could make a high level design you know generate a layout send it off to get made and then have it, you know, within like a week or two. It's wild. And it looks like you can order a single border at a time. That is really interesting. I wonder if the cost has come down enough that that makes sense. I would love to know pricing, but yeah. And then this is another one where you get on demand. I have no idea what EMC services are. Sorry, folks, we're going to skip over that one. Now we're getting into less related stuff where this is just stuff that was popped up by Coulter in Exa.ii, which I use to find related things. So this is really interesting. I kept this one because the idea of autonomous manufacturing is really interesting for me where we could get to a point where, you know, I specify what I want a circuit to do. It Something like Coulter generates tons of layouts. I select those layouts based on which one seems to make the most sense, or even it selects for me, it doesn't matter. And then it sends it out to a factory that takes in the design, pumps it out and sends it to me. Like we're not, that's not super far off. And I I would be curious if that's happening already. So very, very interesting stuff. I am not going to look too much into the specific startup, but I did want to talk about it. Right. And this kind of, Overlaps with my home automation. All right, and then what's interesting here is it. I think Quilter. It, what it, what it picked up on is like Quilter ended up. sounding medical-ish. So I think one thing that you can kind of do with a company name or startup name is feed it into something that's doing semantic search or similarity search and see what is associated with it. It's basically a way of checking out a startup name in some ways. So this one is about understanding healthcare supply chain. God knows what that is. I don't know how they do this. Oh my God, you just take a picture and then it tells you what's going on. Once again, healthcare and circuit boards have these freaking acronyms that I'd never know what they are. But this is interesting to try to understand uh, healthcare supply chain. Also interesting how it correlated with the name. This one, at one, another thing I wanted to talk about is just the proliferation of AI. AI, 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 right? And I was talking about in the home automation, it used to be Internet of Things, IoT, everything, right? And I don't know how I feel about this. And I don't know how I feel about in the world of healthcare. And this is just a tangent. Someone I know was talking about the interaction between healthcare and insurance when it comes to AI. So each of these 
kind of fields had built bots to try to resolve claims. And the bots just go back and forth and talk to each other. And that's happening now. That's something that the CEO of Bumble talked about for dating as something in the future. It's happening now in healthcare. And I'm not sure it's the greatest use of AI. I really love this use of AI because I think it helps us iterate faster. It gives us more choices and more options. And it's informed, right, by experts. So people can, who know about this, basically are more productive. It's actually